in 1892, William Heffelfinger was the first player to be paid to play professional football. Since then, the size of linemen in particular has grown exponentially. With the NFL in its 100th year, we look at 100 years of evolution of linemen's body composition. In 1892, William Heffelfinger was the first player to be paid to play professional football. Heffelfinger was 6 foot 4 and 80 kilogram. However, compared to modern day linemen, he is tiny. In the modern game, the average offensive lineman is 6 foot 4 and weighs 310 pounds. That's 140 kilograms. And the average defensive lineman in 295 pounds, that's 133 kilograms, and between 6 foot 3 and 6 foot 5 in height. So why are there so many players over 300 pounds? The height and weight of every NFL player per position has increased over the years, especially tight ends, the defensive and offensive linemen whose height and weight increases have been much larger than other NFL positions. Body mass of football players has increased significantly over the past 40 years, with linemen increasing body mass by 30 kilograms. There has also been an increased range in the weight between the lighter positions and the heavier positions in the NFL. This is partly due because we have moved away from the old school thinking that the most average body type was the best and most athletic type for all sports. However, our understanding of somatotypes and then later on phenotypes combined with the fact that we had a kind of natural selection in terms of those with the better physique often ended up playing better in their sports meant that we ended up having a more specialized body types. Also, players training and nutrition has vastly improved. But could also size specialization occur due to rule changes that happened in the 1940s and the 1950s. Before the 1950s, substitutions were limited and players would have to play both now sides of the ball. On the touchdown gate. Is back to pass again. There it goes, but it's intercepted by Brock, the Packers center. With the NCAA's introduction of the first platoon system, which allowed for one sub for each play, although the rule actually stated one for each quarter, enable players to become more specialized. The famous Tennessee coach, Robert Nayland, hailed this as the end of chicken shit football. The NFL had experimented with straight substitutions prior to 1950. A player removed during the first half could not return to the field until the second half, while a player removed in the second half was lost for the game. This changed with the adoption of the two platoon system. In the 1970s, blocking below the waist became illegal. Before then, if you were too top heavy, this would make you vulnerable to old school blocking techniques. Direct increases in fat free mass have a direct correlation to strength, speed and power, and resultantly your ability to play in that position. However, situations and certain moments in history have changed the needs of linemen and ultimately their body composition. For instance, the Lawrence Taylor tackle, which broke Joe Feisman's leg, will change the situation and how coaches search for players who play in the left tackle position and what they are potentially looking for. The left tackle is seen as the insurance policy of a football team. They help to protect the quarterback's blind side. A left tackle needs to be tall, strong, wide in the hips, that prevents players getting round them, long arms and long legs in order to be agile. The long snapper position is another position borne by circumstance in recent years and that many want to avoid a James Harrison fiasco where the ball went 28 yards in the wrong direction simply because he wasn't specialized at that position. The body composition and demands of the players in the future may change because at college level they play a spread blocking system which allows a free release downfield whereas in the NFL you got someone in your face as soon as you snap the ball. The latter means that a heavier player is more beneficial. However, being heavier comes at a risk. Greater risk of dying from heart disease, becoming obese after retiring from football. Generally, these guys are bigger anyway. And an increased chance of metabolic syndrome. This kind of shows that healthy at every size does not exist. Health can be linear and reciprocal at the same time. This is not denying that they are super athletic, which clearly they are. It would be interesting to see the evolution of Lyman in another hundred years time.